I want to run an unattended batch job in the cloud without having to configure servers. You should try Cloud Run Jobs. Carolina, you are a product manager for Cloud Run. That's right. Recently, I've been focusing on making it easier to run unattended jobs on Cloud Run without having to set up or manage servers. Perfect. I want to run code that reads a text file from a cloud storage bucket. Every row in the file should create one record in my Firestore database. And the name of the bucket is stored in an environment variable. Can I use Cloud Run jobs for that? Yes, you can. Cloud Run jobs make it really simple to deploy jobs because you don't have to set up any servers. Also, you're only billed for the time that the job actually runs. And we recently made it possible to deploy a Cloud Run job with default parameters and then optionally override those parameters when you actually run it. Sounds great, Carolina. Uh, now, I've created a cloud, uh, a Google Cloud project already. Uh, and here is the code that reads the text file uh, from Cloud Storage. And uh, here is the code that inserts one record in Firestore uh, for every row in the text file. Looks good. And I didn't want to hard code the bucket name, uh, so my code reads that name from an environment variable. That makes sense. You might want to change where the input file lives in the future. You can deploy that code as a Cloud Run job by running a gcloud command. Right. I read up on that in the docs. Uh, they said to set environment variables uh, with a set envvars flag. So I'm doing that. Let me run the deployment command right now. And it's off. Uh, deploying my code as a Cloud Run job. The build and deploy may take a few minutes, depending on what programming language you're using, if you're using build packs or a Docker pot file, and a few other factors. Looks like it's done. Now I can run it from my command line uh, with gcloud run jobs execute. You can also run it from the cloud console. Go to cloud run and then jobs and then click the execute button to run it. Or you can click triggers and then add scheduler trigger to run the job at regular intervals. That's great. Uh, let me add a schedule for running th this job at, uh, let's see, uh, midnight UTC every night. Uh, there. Done. That was easy, Carolina. I'm glad you think so. We worked hard to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Carolina, sometimes I want to run this job and let it read from another bucket than the default one. Uh, sometimes I may receive files in other buckets, or I may want to test this job with a bucket of test data. You said I could override job parameters. That's right. You can override environment variables when you run your job. You can also override command line arguments, the number of tasks to run, or the task timeout. Very good. And how would I override my bucket name environment variable? You'd run gcloud run jobs execute with the update and vars flag. Oh, OK. Doing so now. And I'll run it. Let's have a look in the console. And it read from uh, the new bucket. Uh, it all seems to have worked. That's great. You can also override the job parameters from the Cloud Console. Go to Cloud Run, then click Jobs. Find your job and click on the little arrow next to Execute. And now you can change the environment variable to point to your new bucket. Now if we execute the job, you can see that it's reading from the new bucket. But if I look at the underlying job, the original value is still there. Very nice. Uh, sometimes it's more convenient to run jobs from the Cloud Console, and sometimes it's better to run them from the command line. Um, but as a developer, uh, often I don't have access to the production environment. Can my code start Cloud Run jobs? Of course. Cloud Run jobs have an API that you can call from your code. 
And we have client libraries for all the common languages to make this really easy. So for example, your existing Cloud Run service could trigger a Cloud Run job to do some background processing. Very nice. Uh, I use Cloud Run jobs in my production systems quite a bit, and it will be useful to run them with different parameters without having to redeploy them. Right. We've seen why you might want to override environment variables. Similarly, you can also override arguments. And you also said that I could override the number of tasks. Why would I want to do that? Ah, that comes in handy. If your code is structured so that each task processes just one piece of input. So if you have 12 files to process, you set task to 12 for that execution. I see. And then you also mentioned uh, overriding the task timeout. Right. You only pay for Cloud Run jobs when they're actually running. But what if your code has a bug and you get an infinite loop? It can be useful to set the task timeout close to the expected running time of the job so that if you do get an infinite loop, your task gets stopped. All right. Thank you for sharing this with us, Carolina. Thank you for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Carolina or me, please add them to the comments. Also, let me know what other serverless topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time. Thank you.